this is now one one lone star season four episode two discussion slash review titled new hot mess and i gotta say hurricane iris came in strong let's talk about it i've said it before and i'll say it again 911 lone star just does it different and i ain't mad at it this episode was yet again another home run for me man i really loved it i enjoyed it wholeheartedly all the way through there were no bad moments for me now the only moment that you know was a little weird <laughs> was the opening segment where we see this lady you know uh in the trailer on the highway where her husband hooked up the trailer her trailer to his truck and he's driving it down the highway and you know she doesn't want to leave the trailer because she feel like legally she can stay in it so lady if you want to die and be rubble you know you you go right ahead and do you that's your god-given right but you know marjan jumped in to save her and she didn't want to leave at first but she decided to finally leave and her husband like this man was on a mission okay i'm gonna be 100 percent. he didn't care that the police and the firefighters were trying to stop him owen tried to talk him down this man didn't care he saw swat he revved the engine until he could till he couldn't go anywhere because of the overpass kind of shut him down but it was nice because we get to see sergeant o'brien again aka neil mcdonough or Mc, mcdonough who however you want to say it mcdonough I, I think it's neil mcdonough but anyway we get to see him again and i love uh sergeant o'brien because i love him and owen's uh you know repertoire if you will but this episode is a little bit different because we see that the fbi from last week's episode have now got owen in the fbi offices and they want him to plant a bug for them against this little you know white nationalization group or whatever i honestly don't know what they're called but there's some kind of biker brotherhood gang or whatever and they may escalate to violence because they have before but Sergeant O'Brien is a part of this place, and at the ending of the episode, we see that he found Owen's bug, he kicked Owen out of the bar, told him not to come back, and everything. Now, me, myself, personally, if I was Owen, I haven't got caught in any kind of situation or anything like that, so they, the FBI can't force him to do this. Like They can ask, and that's all they can do, and me, myself, I'm not a cop, I'm a firefighter, and this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm saying no, these people are violent. You showed me that they're violent and I don't want no part of this. No, I am sorry. Y'all need to find somebody else. If y'all ain't making me do this, I'm not doing it of my own accord. But he bumps into Sergeant O'Brien and there's this whole thing going on with them. But Sergeant O'Brien found a bug and erased the video footage that could have actually exposed Owen. Now, the only thing I can think about that is, is that Sergeant O'Brien is undercover and now the fbi don't know that because this is more than likely a local case as of right now it's not like a federal thing now they are on the federal watch list but they haven't really broken any federal laws as of yet so they, that's why they didn't have a reason for the warrant and i'm not mad at that because you know like i said you know it's 911 lone star and we're focused most of the time on the 126 we'll have a case with carlos here and there but Sergeant O'Brien is going to be, I'm assuming, our extra eyes and ears into the cop part of, you know, 911 Lone Star. And I'm not mad at that because I enjoy his character. But after his whole interaction with Owen right there towards the ending of the episode, and it kind of just went off and we didn't see anything else about them. I'm figuring, like I said, he's probably the inside man for the Austin PD. And like I said, I'm not upset about that because we have Carlos. So now we got Sergeant O'Brien and it's someone that we actually kind of enjoy. He has, you know, connection with Owen. So he's, he's good people. And it's nice to see that aspect because we focus solely on fires with 911 Lone Star, but now we can start to dive a little bit deeper into the cop aspect. And he's the inside man but that's all that's just speculation we don't have much to go on but i feel like that's the route that we're heading and leading towards the rest of the episode we kind of excluded everybody else and focused solely on that part with owen and sergeant o'brien the fbi and then the rest of it was carlos tk and iris and as you know at the beginning of this video i mentioned hurricane iris because this week they were supposed to confront iris have you know have a nice little dinner get to know each other especially her and tk and she was supposed to sign the divorce papers but she was giving off this weird vibe and everything else now you could chunk it up to her having schizophrenia but then when tk went to meet with her on his own you know to kind of have that whole interaction with her it kind of led to a weird little 
rolled. And you know what I'm saying? She was like, no, you know, Carlos loves a pet project and all this and that and the other. And, you know, like, well, no, I'm not getting a divorce from Carlos. And, like, it all led up to her saying that she wanted to get an annulment so TK could actually be Carlos's, you know, first spouse. And in that moment, I had to give her some credit. You know, sure, she led us down this weird winding road, but she got us to a nice, wonderful destination when she mentioned the annulment. But at the ending of the episode, we see that TK is feeling a little weird because he thinks Carlos is using him as another pet project. And that's not the case. Carlos had to kind of reassure TK, but he also got a phone call at the ending of the episode. And now Iris has gone missing again. And I don't think she's off of her meds. I don't think her schizophrenia is acting up or anything like that. She went to check on someone in that homeless encampment. And I'm assuming something has happened to her. And that sucks because right when we got introduced to her and now we're starting to understand her a little bit more. And we seem that she's she's actually going to be okay. She's going to cause maybe a few troubles, but she's going to be okay in the long run. In that moment, now something happens to her, and I know Carlos is going to be focused on trying to find her, because technically they are still married, but at the same time, she is a valued and important friend to him. And we can't just end her story right there once we got it fully introduced to her and see how, see how she is as a character thus far. Now, the best part for this episode for me was Tommy. Now, Tommy is having a dilemma because, you know, she is up here fantasizing about her pastor in all kinds of different ways. <laughs> but, hey, you know what I'm saying, man? You know, hey, the pastor, you know, him and his wife are divorced. He's he's a single man. He he deserved love, too, okay, Tommy? And, you know, she's she's feeling weird about it, so she got Grace and Judd and Charlie to be, a, along with her daughters, to be buffers at their first date because, you know, she felt a little weird about it. But big ups to the Reverend, man, because at the ending of the date, he came back, gave Tommy a kiss, and, you know, hey, I see her having a dilemma about it is because, you know, she's a member of the congregation, he's the pastor, and, you know, it could be a little weird possibly dating a pastor, you know, if, you know, I don't want to say, you know, you just constantly out here, you know, thinking about doing the do with the pastor. But I mean, you know, it could possibly be a little weird, you know what I'm saying? But you cross that bridge when you get to it, you know what I'm saying? Until then, you're both consenting adults and you're just having dinner and enjoying each other's company. And hey, come on, Tommy, it's it's about time. And we can see that, you know, hey, hey, Tommy got a little hot on the collar when it came around to the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> the episode was nice and i will say that i think that where this season is starting to go down a different path if you will and as i said earlier in my review we're gonna you know touch on the premise of a little bit more of the cop aspect in 911 lone star we haven't really done that a lot throughout the seasons we touched on it here and there bits and pieces but this might be the actual first time where we really dive into the cop aspect of 911 Lone Star like we do a lot of the time in 911. So big ups to Lone Star doing that, man, touching on that aspect and kind of involving Sar Sergeant O'Brien because he is someone that we've known, gotten used to, and they brought him back. And I'm assuming they may eventually bump him up to a regular eventually if it plays out and they continue to like the way that his character does throughout the season. This your boy, Dick Incredible. Don't forget to smash the like button until you can't smash any more. Comment down below, and I'd be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And subscribe. Peace out.